I was there last time, I'm there again this time. But at the end of the meeting, there is uh, perhaps nothing for them to say, this is what I didn't have, and this is what I now have. And it's a pity for such people. You know, in a gathering like this, you have a quite a mixed uh, crowd, multitude. There are those who are still like babies and toddlers, and they do what babies do. And they are used to the usual scene, the ordinary scene, and the normal scene. And they go through the rigmaroles of everything. And at the end, when they get back, that's, that's all. They've gone there, acted like babies and toddlers, and there's no change. And other people are there, like we had last night, like Anna. She came to Shiloh, and she said, something is going to happen. And uh, if something is going to happen, you're going to go beyond the ordinary. You know, you've heard me say before, perhaps, and I've read it in other places too. I don't know where I picked it up, but uh, I said it before I read about it. That if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. Is that true? If you travel on the same road you've always traveled, you're going to get to the same destination that you always got to. And you look at your life today. You look at your environment today. And if what you have is not pleasing, if what you've got is not what you're bargained for, guess who gave you that? You gave it to yourself by what you did, by what you decided, and by the attitude you had. And if you're going to have the same attitude and the same approach and the same kind of uh, things that we always do, you're going to get the same thing at the end of the convention. Then you ask yourself, if last year is the same as this year, and this year is the same as the coming year, and every year is the same as it has always been, would you be happy at the end of the journey? And you just say, this is all I've got because I didn't make up my mind to get more. This time you are going to get more. Amen. And we're going to look at you know, a passage of scripture and I don't know how long it's going to take us, but whatever time it takes us, you want to say, Lord, let God do something. Uh, you know, those of us who are here, you, you might be a father, and you look at yourself as a father. You might be a mother, you look at yourself as a mother, and you say, am I happy the way I am as a father? You might be a pastor, and sometimes, uh, you know, we pastors, I'm one of them, and um, sometimes we pastors, we get to meetings, and once we preach, we're through. But uh, I hope the pastor said, even though you preach, you're not through yet. I said you are not through. Is there something God can do in the life of a pastor? In fact, if we were to just come in here, you, when I listened to the message last night, and you know, we talked about Anna and that uh, for Samuel chapter 1, I thought about that. I said of all the people in Shiloh, all the people that came to that meeting, and they got this and got that. Some of them got tradition. Some of them got, uh, you know, a kind of fellow feeling. Isn't it good we're here once again? Then I thought about Anna. And the prayer she prayed, she gave a prophet to the nation. Somebody greater than even Saul. Because that woman prayed. I don't even know the names of all the other children that she had. But just that one. And if God can do something to you and for you and through you during this convention, and then you give us something in this nation, that through you, things are turned around. And uh, it's going to take people who have a purpose of mind, they have a kind of, uh, they say, I, I want to have something, something that will impact lives and impact families and impact the church. 
and impacted, you know, the nation. Is that possible? I said, is that possible? And that means then you have to ask yourself, and I'm, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, you know, I'm keeping you standing because we're just warming up. Are you getting ready? Uh, I, I've discovered that, you know, there are people that go through life and there's no desire for anything. If you ask them, what do you want in life? What do I want? Do I, they, they can't decide. They can't tell what they want. And the way, the place it always starts is a desire that I have a desire. And I'm asking while you're still standing there, I'm asking, do you have any desire at all as a Christian, as a preacher, as a father, as a mother, as a professional, or, you know, whatever? Do you have a desire? And when you have a desire like that, it's going to set you thinking, how do I get this desire fulfilled? Are there people that have gone before me and they had the same kind of desire? And they reached that goal and they got that desire fulfilled. That means you inquire. That means you are asking questions. You are asking somebody before me that did what I now want to do. Because if you don't have such questions and you don't know those who have gone before you. And you know what? If I climb the same stairs that somebody ahead of me climbed, I'll get to where he got to. If I walk the same path that the person ahead of me walked in, I'll get to the same destination. That's why you're inquiring, is there anybody that wants to do, that has done what I want to do, that has accomplished what I want to accomplish? And it is that that makes you to start on the way. There's the design inquiry. You inquire, and then you acquire what tools did they have. What books did they read? What tapes did they listen to? What were the things they did? And what did they apply their lives and their strengths to that made them to be what they actually were? And as you look at yourself, you might say, I've not even started from number one. I've never had any desire. Not to talk of inquiring after those who have done what I've done. Not to think of acquiring what they did. And you know what? There's some people that they don't, they don't like to uh, exert themselves. And if you're going to do anything, we we'll switch. I said, we we'll sweat. You know, if uh, the student will not sweat, if the father will not sweat, if the mother will not sweat, if people will not even apply themselves, and they are, they are kind of, I say that they are afraid of their sweat. Their sweat irritates them. If you're a person like that, that your sweat irritates you, you take life easy, you go slowly, you never do anything, that means then I say you must perspire, perspire. That means you just, you stay in there, you say, this time I'm going to do something. And I'm not afraid of my, of my sweat. I'm not going to be irritated by my sweat. I'm going to perspire. Those are the people that excel in life. But you know, if we just come to the convention and here we are in the convention and what a jolly time, a good time we're having together. And once you feel a little bit tired, no perspiration, you are gone. And then we find you snoring somewhere. And then we say, Jonah, why are you here? I just couldn't take all that. You look at the program. You know, in the morning from 9 o'clock till 10.30, from 10.45 to 12.15, then from 12.30 they go. Or who, who do they think we are? They just, they want to drive us, you know, to, to such an extreme. It's the people that who need to perspire. They are the people that say, I will get something. And you'll get something. And then you're not going to look at other people. You're not going to, if he is resting, why am I not resting? Because your goals are different. Your destinations are different. And your desires are different. That's why you allow him to have his liberty to sleep. And you want to just get what you want to get. I don't know where Penina was uh, when Anna was praying. And I don't know where even Kena was when Anna was praying. And I don't know where Ophna and Phineas were. Opener and Phineas, they made great change in their lives, but they never cared. And all those uh, people, even Eli himself, uh, the, you know, the boss and the highest of them all, and you can tell, uh, she was just sitting and watching Anna pray. You know, I, I don't like watching other people succeed. I want to get in myself and succeed. I don't want to, you know, watch other people getting happy. I want to get in myself and get happy. How about you? 
But Eli was just watching. And Eli even had wrong accusation. Wrong accusation. Would you take away your wine? And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you'll find here that uh, you might find some people, uh, you know, ministers spoke about it last night. And uh, they, always, they always say the same thing. They always want to provoke and irritate and annoy and whatever. It reminds me of a preacher that uh, went to a particular uh, meeting. They invited him to preach. And as uh, he got up and he preached, he, he preached his heart out. He said everything that, you know, he, he ever knew. And then when he finished, the people lined up to just say, you know, hello, wonderful, it's good you came. And, and this fellow came up uh, on the line and said, hi, preacher, this is great. This is the worst sermon message I ever had in my life. And uh, the preacher thought, did I hear her right? And so the preacher just said, oh, thank you, thank you very much. And then she went to join the queue again. And uh, so when she joined the queue, so the, again she said, when she got to the preacher, said, hi, preacher, thank you for coming. This is the worst message I ever heard in my life. And, you know, the preacher, he, she, he got exactly what the woman was saying now. And then she went back to the queue again the third time. And then the preacher saw her coming. And then the preacher said, I bought it today. And eventually she came on and she said, uh, uh, Hi, preacher, thank you for coming. But I want to tell you something. This is the worst message I ever heard in my life. And uh, so the preacher became disturbed. And eventually, after the whole thing, greeting all the people, uh, then the preacher was talking to the pastor. And uh, he said, please uh, be sincere with me. Uh, you invited me to your church, and I thought I did the best I could do. But a woman came and, you know, told me this. This is the worst message I ever had in my life. And she came three times telling me that same thing. And the pastor said, is it uh, so-and-so? Oh, he said, yes. That is the person they're dressing like that. He said, yes. Oh, don't mind her. That's the only sentence she has in her program. Her computer is just, you know, doesn't have all these uh, softwares. The only thing she has in her system is this is the worst message I ever had in my life. And she says that every time. And there's some people that are programmed like that here that, you know, the only thing you have in your, you know, upstairs in the computer is uh, this is the worst message I ever had in my life. And, uh, you know, your response to everything that is said, everything that is done, and all the people that you meet, you say exactly the same thing every time. I think uh, this time we need to, you know, take that hardware, software, whatever you call it, take it out of this computer. And we need to reprogram this computer of yours. What if we just reprogram you during this convention? And then you now go this direction that you never dreamt of before. Remember what I said, you are going to start with a desire. Am I right? And then you are going to inquire. Some of us are going that direction. You want to inquire from us. If we have time to answer your questions, how did you get to where you got to? So that we can, you know, lend you some of our tools. And then you want to acquire. And you want to perspire. Is that maybe as you go on along, somebody will look at your life and you inspire, inspire somebody. Now, if you can, during this convention, that it's not just that you are getting something, but you can inspire somebody by the way you carry yourself, by the things you say, by the way you live your life. And somebody can say, I was in that convention. I listened to the preachers, but not just the preachers. I saw brother so-and-so. I saw sister so-and-so. And what she said, what she did, how she carried herself, inspired me. And now I'm deciding I want to be like this because of the inspiration I got from her, I got from him. Then eventually, when we get home to glory, and somebody says, I, it was in that convention I took a decision. And I decided this is what I'm going to be in life. And by the grace of God, I became what I actually was looking at every time. And then says, because of you, I am where I am now. How you'll be glad in glory that you inspired somebody. I want you to make up your mind that during this convention, you are going to inspire somebody. Then you are going to ask yourself, when there is a thought in your mind, an idea that came to you, act this way, talk this way, go this way, behave this way, you'll say, 
how will that inspire other people if I did that? And if you judge your life just by that, I want to inspire somebody. And then you say, that's not going to inspire them in the right direction. Because of that, you want to, you know, change everything around. And uh, then during this time, you might want to retire so as to refire. You see, if you're always in the crowd, always talking, you're going to talk yourself out of what you really desired. But if you will retire and just say, you know, somebody wants to chat, 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 and say, oh, my brother, I'm sorry, this is a special time for me. Um, there's something I've been looking for for one whole year. This is my time just to be here. And I don't have time for all the chatting and all the talking and what we used to you do. I used to be in the, you know, gossiping camp. And every, in, every, in every convention. But this time, because of what I have in mind, because of what I want to achieve, and what I want to have, I'm retiring from all that. So that when I get back to my various locations, I'm going to refire. Am I talking about you? Can that happen? Now, but you just bow your head now, and you're going to you just, just think through and pray and say, Lord, here am I now. Why are you here in this convention? What's the Lord going to do? What change is he going to make? What's your desire? Are you inquiring for anything? Asking for anything? Are you willing to acquire whatever it takes? The courage and the strength, the tapes and the books, the habit, the change in your approach. Are you going to acquire whatever it will take? Whoever agrees with you, whoever disagrees with you, are you going to be the same old Jack? The same old leaking vessel? Are you willing to perspire? Until you get to where you want to get to. Will your life influence anybody? Inspire anyone? Are you good just going to go through life? But your life not impacting anyone. Are you so used to the crowd? That you cannot for some time in solitude retire so the Lord can empower you or to then refire the new strength. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you at this time. We bless your name. Thank you for this convention. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have us here for a purpose. And we know that nothing happens by accident.